All right, here we are under the hood of our 2024 3 liter Duramax. So this is the LZO engine that's available in the 2023 to current Silverado 1500 and the Sierra 1500. We're gonna be doing the installation of our EZX module that's just been released for that 2023 and newer truck. It's worth noting that we do support the 22 and a half LM2 with this same module. So the part number on it is a 22 712 and it supports that 22 and a half lm2 which has the refresh interior the global b encrypted uh, messaging system but the older lm2 engine that was in the 2020 through 2022 models so this supports that 22 and a half lm2 and the 23 to current lzo so to start this install off everything is plug and play it's really simple to do with the exception of the map sensor and the only problem with it is its location. They did not put that map sensor in a user-friendly spot on top of the engine. So getting access to that connector to unplug the map sensor and plug in our harness is a little bit challenging. Um, Got to have some small hands, but you can get to it. You can do it in your driveway. If you don't feel confident in being able to do the installation yourself, obviously you can reach out to an authorized edge dealer um, and have one of those guys uh, professionally install the EZX, but it is fairly simple. I've done about a dozen of these installs myself and can have it installed and removed in 15, 20 minutes. Um, the first time you do this, it could take substantially longer than that just because of that map sensor. The rest of it is super simple to access, plug and play. There's no special wiring that needs to be done. We don't have to go through the firewall or anything. Everything's done right here under the hood. The first step of any install is obviously gonna be disconnecting the battery. So over here on the passenger side fender, we're gonna use a 10 millimeter ratchet and loosen up that positive terminal on our battery. And then we're gonna lift that battery cable up off of the battery, make sure it's not making any um, connection with the post on that battery. So we've got power killed in the vehicle so we don't have to worry about a short or a, anything going through the ECM or causing an issue of any kind. And then we're gonna get our EZX out of the package so that we can get the harness and the module. The next step once that battery is disconnected is we have to take this engine cover off. This is super simple. There's one 10 millimeter bolt right here on the passenger side of that cover. We're gonna loosen up that bolt and then remove our oil cap so that we can get in there. All right, we got the bolt loose. We're gonna remove the cap, set it aside, and then you can lift up on the front of that cover and then just pull it towards you and you'll see that it's got a couple of isolators that hold it here on the back. So you just have to slide it forward off of that cover. Get that set aside. And now we have our harness and our module out of our package. So we've got one big connector that's over here in front of the air box. We've got the connector for the EZX module itself. We have a mass airflow connector that's on the air intake, right on the lid of the air box. And then we have a fuel rail pressure sensor that's located right down here in front of the intercooler hose. It's right down below there. And then we have that map sensor that's located back in the back on the driver's side top of the engine. And it's down underneath the intake tube. So we're gonna remove this to get access down to that. So we'll reposition the camera so you can get a better, little better angle. All right, so we have our coolant reservoir disconnected from the firewall. We've moved it as far forward as we can. Our map sensor is located right here underneath this intake tube that runs from the air box around to the turbo inlet. You can see this wire harness right here, this black wire harness that's right here is leading into the map sensor that's located clear back in here. So it's a little bit tough to get to, especially if you've got big hands, but you will have some room to, to kind of lift this intake tube up out of the way. You get another half inch of clearance maybe from that. Um, but by lifting it up, that wire connector has a gray keeper right on the very top. So you've got to be able to put your fingernail, your thumbnail or your pointer fingernail on the, that gray keeper and slide it backwards. You'll hear it click or you'll feel it click when it slides back. Once that keeper has been slid back, you can press down on it um, to open up the connector and then un 
uh, remove that connector from the map sensor and then we'll be able to install our new EZX harness connector right into the factory sensor and then pigtail it into the connector itself. It's going to be a little bit hard to get on film but that at least gives you the location of that map sensor. That'll be the most difficult one to get to in this installation. Okay so with our map sensor connection made we can put our coolant bottle back on those two mounting studs of the firewall and then we can put our mounting bolt back into place. We, obviously we've got our map sensor connector routed underneath that coolant bottle. Take that 10 millimeter bolt, get that started, we'll go ahead and snug that up. Now removing the coolant bottle isn't a necessary step, but it's going to make it a whole lot easier to get your arm and hand back into that map sensor. And since we don't have to drain anything or disconnect hoses or anything, it's, it's really just a simple step. So get that snug back in place. We're good to go there. And then we can put our air box lid back on to the vehicle. Get this out of the way here. sure you get that tube back on and fully seated. Obviously we don't want to have a leak here since it's after the air filter. Any dirt that could be sucked in through this hose is going to go right to the engine. So we want to make sure that's on like it needs to be. lid back on. Obviously we need to tighten up our clamps. We had loosened this one in our previous step, but we didn't need to because we were able to disconnect it right from the intake tube itself, not from the lid. Again, you want to make sure you get these clamps tight. We don't want any debris getting pulled into the intake downstream of the air filter. Okay. So we've got our full connection here. This really short harness goes to the mass airflow. And then the longer one here is the one we're going to route to our rail pressure sensor. So we're actually going to feed this under the oil dipstick tube. And then the rail pressure sensor is actually loaded direct, located directly below this uh, intake tube that runs from the intercooler to the engine. The rail pressure sensor is facing forward right below um, we'll show a picture that can zoom in on that. But with that rail pressure connector, it's just like the map sensor where it's got the gray keeper on top. You pull back with your thumbnail and then press down on that gray keeper and you'll be able to disconnect that rail pressure sensor. And you can see we've got our harness here in our hand. So this harness that we've rerouted is going to plug in to one end of the harness. You'll hear it click and then you want to close that keeper so that it stays connected. The other end of that harness is obviously going to go on to the rail pressure sensor itself. If you've got small hands, this is not tough to access. But again, you'll hear it click and then close that keeper. So we've got a rail pressure connector connected. Now we're going to move on to this mass airflow. Oops. One end on to the connector. It clicks, close the keeper. We've got the other end of that right here. Connect that again and also close that keeper there. So at this point we have made all of our connections to our sensors. We just need to make our connections at this main controller here. And then we'll plug in the EZX module itself.
and mount it to the back side of the airbox. I'm going to reposition our camera so you can see how this uh, connector works so that you can get it disconnected and engage the new harness on your own. But first we need to pull back this red keeper. You'll see that it disengages the little lock that's in this uh, round roller right here. Now the next step is that on the bottom portion of this connector you can see this tab that's on the corner where it's slit. You need to press in on that corner of that tab to disengage it and then this whole outside collar will slide upwards and it roll this um, round dial on the inside of the connector you'll actually see it roll so you just press in on this tab with your thumb and then slide it upwards and once it comes all the way up it will disengage itself we got it all the way up so that uh, the outer collar is up here at that red tab it will then just completely come disconnected and now at this point we need to connect the new EZX harness in place. So it's going to slide down on. And then we're going to take this outer gray collar and slide it all the way down until you hear it click. And then that keeper will be able to close on the dial. Same thing on the other end of that connector. Just slide it together and then use your fingers to slide that outer collar all the way down. You'll hear it click and then close that keeper. So that's our main harness connection made and we can route this part of our harness around the back side of the airbox to install our EZX module. So our main harness is made, fuel rail pressure, mass airflow, and the map. The last part of this installation is to plug in our EZX module into the connector. You'll hear it click. We do include some double side tape and some Velcro that allows you to mount this module to the back side of your airbox lid. And then there's enough harness there as well so that you can take the lid off and off, on and off to service your air filter. But with that done, we can now move on to pairing our app to the module, and then we can go through all of the um, feature sets within the app and show you how to change power levels. All right, so we've completed our module install. We've got all of our connections made. We've got our module right here. The first thing we need to do is we need to be able to download the EZX app that we'll get in our app store. You can just search for the Edge EZX, or you can use the link that's in the instruction manual to get you where you need to go. We're gonna open that app up and we need to turn on the ignition to the vehicle. So we need to just press and hold the start button so that the vehicle powers up without starting the engine. So you'll see that the dash turns on, the stereo, etc. And then we need to bring that app within about a foot of that module and it's gonna try and connect. You can see that the Bluetooth is on, it's detected that this is the first time we've connected to the module. We're gonna select continue and it's gonna now start to check for any updates, make sure that the module is up to date and make sure that the app itself is up to date. So it says to ensure that the vehicle is on but the engine is off, we're gonna select continue and now what it's gonna do, it's gonna launch our update agent software. So it's gonna go right to our server. So on this server, we'll be able to check the module, the serial number from this module is up to date, and then we'll make sure that the app itself is up to date. The first time you do this, it's gonna ask you to create an account, um, which is just an email and a, a login password. I've obviously already done that. So it went right to the update process. You can see that it's pulled our device's serial number and the part number on the device for this uh, LZO application. All right, so our device is up to date, so we can click back up here at the top, which takes us back to the main app. Once we get into that app, you'll be able to see all the features that are available for this application. So the big one here is obviously the power level control. So if you select the power level tile, we've got our five different power levels, one through five and you can adjust those on the fly just by tapping the power level you wanna to switch to. Obviously the power five, level five is that 40 horsepower, almost 100 foot pound of torque. But then you'll also notice here on the right side of the screen where it says throttle, we've got these numbers. So you can go in and set the pedal sensitivity for how you like it in each individual power level. So every power level can have a different pedal setting, anywhere from economy, which is actually less responsive than the factory pedal, all the way up to our ludicrous setting, which is a very aggressive pedal um, some guys like that in their daily driver, some guys don't. I prefer 
setting two or setting three when I'm daily driving and towing, but you have the ability to go in and set that to your preference in whatever power level you want to run. And again, you can adjust all that on the fly with the app from in the vehicle. We've got our ECT Protect. This isn't a feature that you adjust, it's just letting you know that there is a default protection so that the module will not add power to the vehicle until it's up to operating temperature. Same thing if it gets too hot, it'll actually derate and turn the module off if your coolant temperature gets out of range. Big one for you guys is the auto start stop feature. You can go in and select enabled or disabled. So if we select disabled, when the button on the dash is turned off, the auto start stop system is going to stay off all the time. You will never have to press that button on the dash again. As long as the module's installed, it's gonna keep that start stop system turned off all the time. So super nice feature there. Then we've got the ability to do DPF regen. We've got our uh, manual and mobile regen for this LZO application. And then we've got our diagnostics feature so we can read and clear trouble codes. And then if you live in a county that requires emissions testing every year, we do have our emissions readiness check. So you can go in there and click that and it'll show you all of the different uh, readiness monitors that are in the vehicle. And you can make sure that they're all checked and turned on before you go in for that emissions testing. So pretty simple, easy to walk through, very intuitive. Our hamburger menu up here gives us our account, all the device information. We can go to our product store, to our website, customer service contacts, all that kind of stuff. So we really look forward to getting your feedback on the EZX in your 22 and a half LM2 and your 23 and newer LZOs. Um, we look forward to seeing your posts. Make sure you're tagging Edge products or EZX module. Um, in your posts about the product. We're excited to hear what you think. If you have any questions, obviously you can reach out to our tech support over the phone. Uh, you can also reach us through our social media channels like our YouTube, Facebook, and our Instagram. Thanks for watching.